And joining us now at our studio in Washington, our regular Friday and now, uh, news analysis team, Mark Shields and David Brooks. Hello, gentlemen. It looks like we have a little bit of news, although we don't know what the news is <laughs> in the news. We're, we are waiting for more information. We're going just on the, on the thinnest of threads. But, Mark, based on what we're hearing, and, of course, we just heard from two individuals who work in, have worked at the Justice Department, have been a federal prosecutor, if it's the case there are no indictments being recommended, um, that's going to bring a sigh of relief from this White House, isn't it? Uh, I, I would say it is, Judy. I mean, there, we, we know about Robert Mueller, uh, that this has been leak-proof, and that uh, it, it, he has a reputation for incredible thoroughness. Um, and I, I think the relief, or maybe the question will turn out to have been the indictment of whether they can indict a sitting president or not. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, quite frankly. But, I mean, let's be frank, 34 people have been indicted, right? Six, uh, six associates of the president, five have pleaded guilty. I mean, we are... Uh, th this, this is not for naught. It's not a, an empty exercise by any means. David, how do you read what little bit, little bit we yeah. know? So I mean, the, the news event is a piece of paper was handed from one office to another that's office. Right. That's, that's what yeah. happened today. Uh, you know, this takes place in a political context, and I think a lot of people, we've been talking about the Mueller report, uh, and some people were treating it as the messiah that was going to come and rid them of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and there was an expectation that it would shift the, fundamentally the ball game. Uh, right now, there, there are daily allegations about Trump, about this or that, bad tweets. Republicans have stuck with him. Democrats have opposed him. We've been in this World War II situation. And so the question is, does the report change that trench warfare, essentially? And if there are no indictments, I really have trouble seeing how it does that. Uh, it, no indictments on collusion, but even the ones I expected there might be were on the obstruction piece. And this started as an obstruction uh, investigation after the Comey firing. And so if there's no indictments even on obstruction, then... There will be bad stuff, presumably, and we'll be, but we'll fundamentally probably be in the same situation. And so I think the, the smart money for the past months has always been shifting, as we've been saying, to the Southern District of New York, right. into his financial crimes. The collusion, I've always been a skeptic, just because I don't think there was a Trump campaign. There was no organized thing to actually do the collusion. So it, it sounds, I mean, David is saying, in essence, Mark, that yes, there have been referrals to the Southern District of New York, but they don't appear to go to the heart of what this investigation was about. That's the reason they were referred to to uh, the Southern District. Yes, I mean, remember Bob Mueller had a, a pretty narrow mandate, which was Russia and Russia's involvement in, in this election. I mean, so, I mean, in, in that sense, uh, it, it, but I, no, I, I, I do agree, Judy, that uh, uh, what we, we, we have, uh, beyond being astonishing leak, leak proof, is, is the question of what does come out. I mean, you recall the Star Report coming out in all its graphic, specific, embarrassing detail. Right. And, and about the, President Clinton. About President Clinton. And the, and the policy has been, in the past, the Department of Justice, that you do not identify anybody who was targeted but against whom no legal action was taken. So we, we don't know what the, the status is of the report of the president or, or anybody else at this point. I mean, unlike in the Comey investigation, uh, where he felt obliged to, to make his statements about uh, Hillary Clinton, the presidential candidate, in 2016. I'm going to ask both of you to, to stand by, sit, sit there and wait with me, because on the phone right now is the chairman of the House uh, Intelligence Committee, uh, Adam Schiff, congressman from California. Congressman Schiff, obviously, we're in the very early moments, hours of having this report transmitted from the special counsel, Robert Mueller, to the office of the attorney general. Uh, the briefings have not yet happened, I gather, at your end. But what do you know so far? Well, I think what we know so far is that this report is going to deal with the decisions to prosecute certain people and the decisions not to prosecute others, why the special counsel felt the evidence was sufficient as to some, but not as to others. The, the important point here, though, is this focuses predominantly on the criminal investigation. But this investigation began as a counterintelligence investigation, and that may be the far more significant uh, side of the House, because... That goes to the question of whether the president or anyone around him has been acting either wittingly or unwittingly as an agent of a foreign power. Uh, and it's going to be very important, number one, that the report is made public uh, so the public understands uh, what decisions the special counsel made and the criminal evidence. But it's going to be uh, even more important, potentially, that the Congress understand if there are counterintelligence risks 
uh, that this president or those around him are acting not in the national interest, but because they have some pecuniary interest or because they're beholden or compromised in any way. Uh, the Congress and, and our committee in particular has a statutory right to know, uh, and we expect that the Justice Department is going to share that information with us because they're, they're going to have to. Well, when you, when you remind us that this investigation began as a counterintelligence investigation, what does that say about what we may or may not be seeing right now in this report? It means that what we are going to see when the report is made public, and we may have to fight the attorney general to make sure that happens, but uh, in a very bipartisan showing on a very polarized issue, the House quite overwhelmingly said, we expect this to be made public. Uh, that may only tell us about prosecutorial decisions that may uh, shed very little light on the issue of compromise. And to give you one gra very graphic illustration, uh, the president during the campaign sought to consummate which something that would have been among the most lucrative deals of his life, and that is the building of a tower that would have required Kremlin support at a time when he was publicly espousing a new relationship with Russia and praising Vladimir Putin, whose green light might be necessary for that project. That is obviously deeply compromising, but that may not be much of the report, because whether it was criminal or not, um, we'll go into the report, but what is essential in terms of the public safety and the security of the country uh, is another matter entirely. And, Congressman, what do you make of these early reports that this will not uh, in include any further indictments than what we've already seen? Well, I think uh, a couple things. First, uh, that means that this office, the special counsel's office, which is essentially like an outside counsel for the Justice Department, it won't be bringing any future indictments. Uh, that doesn't preclude either the main Justice Department or the Southern District of New York or other elements of the Justice Department from bringing indictments. And, and I think is very possible, given the number of redactions in the Mueller pleadings that suggest other investigations that are still ongoing. Uh, but the last point that I, that I want to make, because it addresses the conversation you were having before I, I came on the line, is this issue of does the department share information about people not indicted? Uh, and it's important for people to know that during the last Congress, the Justice Department shared over 880,000 pages of discovery with the Congress in an investigation in which no one was indicted, about Hillary Clinton, about Bruce Orr, about Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, about Andy McCabe and others. And it did so because of the intense public interest, and it did so because Congress insisted on transparency. Uh, and as I told them at the time, they are not going to get away with a double standard. Uh, if the Congress changes hands, as it has, um, we will insist on the same level of transparency as to this even more important investigation. So the department may speak in generalities about that, but the reality is it departs from that policy when the public interest demands it, and here, clearly, the public interest demands it. Congressman Adam Schiff, uh, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us. And again, I'm joined in our Washington studio by uh, our analysts, uh, Mark Shields and David Brooks. David, um, you hear the congressman, the Chairman Schiff, making a point about transparency and saying this is paramount right now. Yeah, I think we're all uncomfortable with the idea that prosecutors dump a bunch of information on someone they decide not to charge. Uh, that's generally the rule. Uh, and so I, I understand their suspicion. But I think Adam Schiff's argument is essentially the correct one, that there are exceptions to this case. And when you're investigating the president of the United States over something where he may have compromised national security issues, I do think making it public uh, is the, the, the weight is on that side. And once they make it public to Congress, we'll all know. Uh, and so the Mueller has not leaked. But we're about to have a, a little fight over how, how much we release. But I suspect by the end of the day, everything will come out. Mark, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but I, w I do want to come back to this, uh, the point that uh, Chairman Schiff made about the distinction between what's the criminal investigation and what's the investigation into counterintelligence, the Russia piece of this, which there have been a number of indictments around that mm -hmm. uh, so far. But we don't know yet how many more shoes, if any, there are to drop on. No, that. no, we don't. And, uh, I mean, his, his, uh, his point that... Uh, uh, whether the you know, president willingly or wittingly or unwittingly um, is uh, you know, dealing with a foreign foreign power. I was rather struck by uh, Mitch McConnell, who's a, if anything else, he's very careful. He made a statement today saying, when this came out, that many Republicans have long believed that Russia poses a, 
a significant threat to American interests, um, which you know is sort of. I mean, he, he's not someone given to idle chatter, and and I you know I don't know, but I think that's where the focus is going to turn. Um, and and obviously his mention, he said Maine Justice, uh, Maine the Justice Department, or the Southern District of New York as well. I want to come back, uh, uh, pick up on that, David, if you want to. But I want I do want to come back to your point earlier about how much energy and time, and this was Yamish and Lisa were speaking about this earlier, how much time and energy and oxygen has been mm -hmm. expended in Washington yeah. over the last two years plus, reflecting on this, anticipating this, wondering what's going to happen, uh, and a lot of fingers pointed at the president. Yeah, a fair investigation is worth it, even if it doesn't come up with indictments. It, you have to investigate <laughs> things that are, that even if, just to find out what happened. And when the president of the United States campaign team has a meeting in the Trump Tower with Russians, that merits an investigation. And if you come up and there's no further indictments, I think we trust Robert Mueller and we say, well, good yeah. job. And thank you for your service. Uh, that doesn't mean it's going to change the politics, but I do think an investigation has been done and, and a sign that American institutions can actually work. And, and, pick, and again, picking up on what Chairman Schiff said, Mark, about, yes, we know that we now know, at least if we believe Michael Cohen, the president's lawyer, there were continuing efforts to try to strike a deal over a Trump uh, tower in Moscow yeah. into, well into the campaign. That's right. Yeah, yeah, well into 2016 is what Michael Cohen has testified. Who, uh, it, it, there are decisions lawyers make and there are decisions voters make. That's right. And whether Michael Cohen and whether Trump was complicit or, or bowing down to Vladimir Putin for this reason or another, uh, that's a decision more for voters than for lawyers, I would say. At this, at this stage, though, uh, I think both, and both of you have said this, when we don't know any more than we know, yeah. we want to be careful about we, assuming. We do. I mean, and, and, I mean, that's whatever Robert Mueller is and has been. I mean, his, his career has been one of being careful. Uh, being thoughtful, uh, being complete, and not rushing to judgment. So, what, what, whatever he delivers will be taken with gravitas and and, and seriousness by any fair-minded person. I mean, obviously, partisans on both sides will yes. you know, yeah. go to their corners. But I mean, he he he. I, I can't think of a public figure who would have been more credible right. in this situation. You, you haven't seen leaks. And at, it's <laughs> at a moment office. when Sean Hannity and many others have been going after Robert Mueller day yep. after day after day. Now he must have felt an incredible temptation to strike back in some way, but he, he just took That's it right. and delivered the report. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to compare this with other investigations uh, where, where the leaks have been at a minimum. This may be, this may hold the record incredible. for the fewest yeah. uh, in, bits of information shared with the press, with the public. He ought to be the personnel director for any <laughs> president administration. I mean, the, I mean, the people he chose are exactly like him. They've been just as circumspect, just as discreet, and just as tight-lipped. All right. Well, there it's, it has just literally come out in the last hour or so. We learned at 5 o'clock Eastern that the report had been submitted, uh, and uh, the Congress was notified, and now we wait. We wait. We see what, we see what happens. Mark Shields, David Brooks, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.